Um, let's look at the cache. Uh, this is the new cache that I recently introduced to uh, uh, into the uh, NFX uh, framework. This cache is based on the concept of the pile. Uh, if you recall from my past video, a pile is a custom memory manager uh, that, or rather, a location on uh, the managed heap, which is basically a byte array. And the reason it was constructed so you could you could store hundreds of millions of objects without causing a stress on the garbage collector in the managed uh, heap. Um, so a pile uh, is basically something that has some statistics like object count, allocated memory bytes, memory capacity and everything and then you have method put, uh, get, get, rejuvenate, that is if you want to rejuvenate an object if a pile supports the expiration of objects but a pile is basically just like a heap it's this, uh, for those of you who don't know what a word pile means in English, and I know some viewers are not native English speakers, it's like a heap of objects is like a pile of objects, okay? Just a lot of objects stuck up together, piled together, okay? So the word pile I use just to signify this difference from the heap, it's the same concept, only the objects that I store. You store the object, you get a pile pointer back. The pile pointer is basically a struct that has uh, three uh, integers in it. It's a very simple design, node ID, segment, and address. Those are three integers. The node ID is important so you can have distributed piles, so that is distributed heaps of objects uh, that the objects are smeared among many servers in the cluster environment. All right, so the pile pointer is very, very efficient um, way to identify the point to an object in the pile. Okay. So, but the pile is just a memory manager. So, how do you get stuff by the key? You can get the item by the arbitrary key from the pile because the pile is a man memory manager and it gives you a pointer. So, you need something else. You need a hash table. You need something like a cache. Um, you know, a cache store, okay, a cache, that is, or rather, you, you don't need a cache store, you can create a hash table that uses pile, but uh, primarily pile was built to cache a lot of data, therefore, uh, it organically comes with another interface called cache, okay, a cache is a cache. It's self-explanatory, part my tautological definition here. The cache can be uh, either, or you look at the local, local distributed or run in the ORM cluster, which is a type of a distributed cache. The object persistence that it supports can be either in memory, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, if you tear the memory down, that's it, okay? Upgradable memory, that is, you can upgrade versions of objects, they can change structure, okay? Disk, that is, the objects are, are also dumped to disk and they can be persisted on disk and memory disk is a hybrid between the two, okay? And if you dump it to disk or memory disk, they're of course upgradable because, uh, and what the hell is this? Oh my god, that's a typo. Great. Uh, I have no idea how this survived the review. Okay. Uh, the, uh, what happens is that if you're if you are uh, persisting your objects to disk, then uh, uh, you have to have them upgradable. Otherwise, you won't be able to read them back. Okay. So if you're familiar with like serializer versioning, okay, so you can change the structure of your object and read the information that was persisted to the file at the later time. But let's talk about memory because the primary purpose of this is to store objects in memory, not on disk. So uh, it, it can also replicate those objects to disk, but primarily this is built for in-memory storage for very high efficient access, okay? and. A cache is just a list of registry of tables, where a reg uh, I registry is just an indexer, so to speak, on the cache table. So the cache table has some statistics, and uh, of course it has methods, you know, get, put, remove, rejuvenate, that is, uh, you can touch an object and you can reset its expiration date, and uh, get or put and purge, okay? And then um, I have a local cache, 
which implements this interface uh, and what happens here is that uh, it is built around the local pile and we can build a local cache built on distributed pile or we can build a distributed cache built on the distributed pile so there are many combinations here but uh, let's look at, at the way how it works so here I have created a test application uh, it is a Windows form application I can quickly switch back and forth between different buttons here as you see it doesn't look pretty but it does its job so the most interesting thing here is this so if we come and this is, by the way, because this application is the, um, um, it's a cluster, uh, this application container is a cluster enabled cluster application container. Therefore, I get this management site served right from this application. Okay. And what happens is that I see a list of components that my application consists of. Okay. My local cache appears here automatically and here is my default pile. Okay. Remember, a pile is a memory manager and the cache is the layer on top of it. And it shows me there is one table here and I can change the options. This looks horrible. Uh, we're working right now to change this to print like a tree view so you can, you can change it. But the most interesting thing is if you think about it for a second, you can change the options here of those things uh, at runtime. Okay, so I can put the pile uh, and uh, the cache in the reuse space mode. It will take longer to find the appropriate space in the in the pile or favor speed that will use more RAM but but work faster okay space time trade-off that is okay anyhow so once I have done this I can now click on charts and my instrumentation counters that are, but I don't want to click those guys every time here is my my counters that my um, pile and my pile exposes but I don't want to click those guys every time because I'm just gonna get mad what if we come here and then just load this preset and I'll get this data um, you know coming into my process so here is my data and uh, what is oh actually it, it, it has been open here okay, whatever close that so and we can look as far back however many uh, buffer spaces you have so what we see here we see a detailed statistics I have selected a few counters here what I've been doing for the past uh, two hours I've been bombarding the cache with uh, tens of millions of objects I came to 150 millions of objects at some point now what's interesting here is that while this does all of that crazy stuff my garbage collector stays uh, below 200 millisecond time frame. You see, if I click this button here, I induce the garbage collector. I also could have done it like this. I could have come here to console and I could have done a GC command and send it into the core of this process right here. Okay, and it tells me 25 milliseconds that many bytes free. This is the application console for those of you who have missed that video that I made before. So if I do help, it gives me a list of commands that my process understands just like your application um, um, command line this is the command line within your application that you can remotely access using the ASCON tool application server connector or if you can to your process using the web manager portal which is right here then you have a console which is integrated right here so for example you want to see who is connected to the process you do a who command and it prints you the session um, uh, trace or session list uh, the version command will show you the uh, Oh, that's right. That's right because this process doesn't have any version information. That's okay. Uh, the, the version of the of the process, what uh, you know, version of software it has. But this is a crappy test process. That, that's why it doesn't have any version information. And quite honestly, this command line should probably detect if there is no version. It just says should say none instead of printing the and printing the exception. But other than that, uh, one of the interesting commands here is Siemen, uh, because that stands for Component Manager, and it shows you the, compo the logical components that are active within that application right now. So, for those of you who are familiar with uh, uh, 
I don't even know how to put it, like Complas or something like this. This has nothing to do with Complas. Uh, this is completely operating system transparent. It works on Linux the same way. Uh, these are just logical components within your application container. So we locate local caches right here with the system ID of 29. Um, so what we can do, we can do cman and put the system ID, that's an instance ID of 29 and do uh, this command and then um, uh, or rather connect to this component and get a list of parameters that this component uh, understands exposes and you can change some of them as well and uh, as the help for the cman command explains but uh, this view here is the same kind of view but it's graphical okay so you can change your components right here. You can change those properties that, that are changeable right here. For example, uh, we are right now looking at the cache and we see that those objects are dying. You see the counts are going down. That is why, because I have uh, decreased the length of the object lifespan. How did I do it? I came here to the table option for table one. You see this guy does table one. It inserts and keeps inserting records on the cache table. What I can do, I can come here, and again, this is not pretty, but we're going to change it to a better design um, property window, so to speak. So let's say, let me put 60 here, 60 seconds. So. And that's it. It changed the property. So now the default, that is the default maximum age in seconds for the object uh, that I insert in cache. Okay. And what happens now, my cache, so look, this is, this shows you the metrics that we're plotting on the graph. Um, let's select like past 10 minutes so it works batters who can see more resolution here. So see, those are samples that are coming in real time from this process. Okay. So what I I plot here what I select here. So see I select this stuff here and it plots it in the in the graph. Okay. So let's get rid of that tree. So what happens here that I allocate bytes for the default pile. So right now we're around somewhere around four gigabytes of the pile. It has allocated that much RAM from the system process, okay? And at the same time, look, the garbage collector is instantaneous. So I can easily allocate right now 100 million business objects in my pile, and yet the garbage collector is not going to be overwhelmed. And I can keep those objects there for hours, and that's not going to affect the garbage collector. So what happens here is this, uh, the pile, and, and for those of you who haven't watched my previous video about the speed of the pile, I can tell the pile is extremely efficient. Uh, it allows you to insert over one million objects a second on this computer, which is not a server. It is a good workstation. It has a core six, um, i7 six cylinder, or rather <laughs> six CPUs. <laughs> <laughs> with hyperspeading, it has 12 cores, 6 cylinder engine, that's something else. And then it has 64 gigs of RAM, uh, so I can do experiments like this. But that's not a server level processor. And um, still, I can, I can easily read on a single thread from a pile a business object like a person, let's say, first name, last name, age, date of birth. It can easily read around 700. 700,000 transactions a second on one thread. So for the write intensive loads, I average on this on this computer like 1.5 million inserts a second. So imagine a cache uh, of database data sets or data records, data tables or something, and you need to store them so you don't go to Memcache or Redis. You want to access them locally. This is much faster. This is going to be much faster than accessing Memcache or Redis or um, uh, Mongo, uh, some people use, or or custom even written C++ or C server. Reason being, you don't have any network traffic here. It's all on the managed heap. A pile is a 100% managed implementation. It uses a big byte array. So what we see here, we see here the load, the number of utilized bytes, the uh, uh, overhead bytes uh, that are, um, you know, because the pile is a memory manager, it has uh, three buckets and all of that stuff. So you see how much 
it allocates that this this green uh, bar here and this uh, blue uh, or rather line not the bar a line the blue line is the number of utilized bytes and this is the red line is how many bytes are allocated from the system and we're decaying a number of objects because they're expiring much faster now so I can cut down the automatic insertion of the objects and then um, uh, what we see here, if we put the logarithmic scale on, because we can now see that the cache sweep is evicting around what 63,000 63, objects somewhere uh, per uh, measurement, um, you know, period, which is like what four seconds. We can see that in the instrumentation we are like at four three nine five milliseconds for the processing interval for the for the instrumentation okay that makes sense so what happens now is that my uh, uh, the eviction goes on the green thing here is the cache count is how many objects are in cache the teal or whatever you call it the aqua uh, uh, color here is object count uh, that is the number of objects in the pile as you can see those those two guys are co-mingled or quote co connected with each other because that's what it is the the cache is a half table with a thread that examines objects for expiration and it stores objects in the pile and the pile comes here to you see that it, it comes to zero because I have turned off the insertion of the objects so now those objects are expiring now and what else do we have we have a lot of characteristics here actually a lot of performance counters cats and misses we have Okay, so I can do cat cat, and I can do it per table or per whole cat. Okay, you see that? So the cache cat is the. Uh, let's look at this here. We put the logarithmic scale. Why? Because I'm doing those cats, and uh, this generates random key that generates sequential key. If I go to the sequential key, my cache misses are going to fall. Uh, decree or uh, uh, no, they're not because I think I have just deleted all the records. Everything has just expired. That's it. Everything has just expired because uh, those objects have timed out and they have died out. Um, and the, these are the overhead bytes. Why? Because these are the segments in the default pile. This is the um, that's the segment count. I'm still at like 15 segments here. You see that? So if we go to one hour, this is how many segments, and every segment you can control the size of the segment as well. And oh, what just ha what has just happened? The segments went to two. And let's come here and look at this. You see, it has released all of the memory. It has released all of the memory. The reason being uh, because it doesn't need that memory in the pile and it doesn't need that memory in the uh, cache. And now the cache capacity for the cache slots, that is the part, the portions of the hash table that map key to value, now they are now being shrunk. You see this cache shrunk which is again a performance counter here so you can visually control and see how this whole thing works which is pretty cool and at the same time if I do my garbage collector 360 milliseconds check this out it's very fast so my RAM has decreased um, to uh, now if you if you try to store that many objects yourself in the garbage collected heap once you go past 30 million objects, even on this machine, you would start getting pauses. Uh, even with the most uh, advanced background uh, server garbage collector mode, you would start getting pauses like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. That is a stop world pause. That means that the whole process is corrupted. I mean, not corrupted, but stopped. For 20 seconds, it cannot 
um, serve uh, the requests. Uh, so let's say you have uh, a web server that is processing real transactions and all of a sudden everything just stops. Well, why? Because if you have a cache and you store there 100 million objects, it is just unusable. It is unusable because the garbage collector has to walk all of this. In uh, this environment, garbage collector does not need to walk anything because uh, the the uh, objects are allocated off the pile, which is a big set of uh, it is a set of like whatever. How many segments did we have? 16 segments. It is a set of in our case 16 segments. Each segment is like 256 megabytes each, a byte array. And then we serialize and we manage this memory ourselves. And one would think that oh, this is very inefficient. It is extremely efficient. Not only it's efficient, it's actually consuming way less RAM than holding those CLR objects natively in CLR heap. Why? Well, the reason being because the serializer that, uh, that uh, I use for the pile, when I serialize the object into the unmanaged memory, it is so efficient. First of all, it tries to use the UTF-8 <coughs> encoding, and then it tries to do the variable bit conversion uh, compression of integers. And <coughs> most of the time, integers are like 2, 5, 6, 7, but they're not 8 bytes. So most of the integers in my case are 1 byte long. Even 8 byte integers are 1 byte long. So consequently, if we look at the uh, size of an object here, so let's do this. Let's uh, right now, let's start from zero, and let's try to. Um, it is 6:37 p.m. right now, so let's do 6:42 p.m. and let's let's put uh, let's say six threads, and let's insert eight one two three one two three objects in this table, and see how. Now, that is inserting objects through the cache, into the cache, um, and I have this video compressor, uh, video in, uh, screen capture, video compressor that takes a lot of resources, processor resources, but as, as you can see what's going on right now is my object counts goes up and the red line says cache capacity, the cache capacity gets uh, increased. And uh, I think that's it. So uh, it has, in this scenario, it has inserted um, at 567,000 objects a second in 14 seconds, 8 million objects here. And they are all going to expire at 642, so we have four minutes to go. Okay. And um, uh, you can see how this now actually this is out of proportion because that that's been on the logarithmic like scale uh, you can see that shows you how long it takes to sweep the cache with one thread which is uh, kind of delayed um, you know lazy background thread that sweeps sweeps the cache it examines the cache for um, uh, evictions and uh, you know for, for those guys who are uh, due to be removed um, and what happens now is that oh everything has died already and the reason being because I have put this to 60 minutes to 60 seconds so it, it has only lived for for that long for one minute I should have changed this to let's say uh, you know uh, 200 or something 200 seconds and because what I'm doing I'm changing the default uh, option for my table uh, which is Minimum capacity, maximum capacity. Let me insert some some information before before I talk. Uh, um, maximum capacity, initial capacity, uh, growth factor, shrink factor, load factor, low water mark. That is how 
what threshold does the capacity has to pass going down to trigger the shrinking of your uh, hash table and uh, load factor high water mark default max age uh, that is the default maximum age of the item when you put it in the cache. If you specify null, then it will use that value. If you don't, don't specify null, it will use the value that you specify from the method put. So you can say put, uh, I mean by default it will take 15 minutes uh, and those objects will live for 15 minutes in the cache and then they will get evicted. Okay. So once again, I have created those uh, those uh, uh, objects here, and the system took it as the memory pressure for a lot of allocations that it has allocated the capacity. But then it realized that uh, the capacity was uh, more than it needed, and then it compacted some of it. Okay, see this capacity has shrunk. Okay, so it does all of that stuff automatically, and 641, 642 is coming. Because remember, we said 642 is ex absolute expiration date, um, which is UDC, Universal Time Coordinate, but I take this value and I convert it to UDC be before I call the put method. Um, and uh, sometime in probably 25 seconds from now, we will start seeing... We have five seconds to go uh, in the 641 minute. Okay, 642, 642, 23. Okay, so we have 23 seconds plus the latency of that thread, which is a lazy thread on the background, and it kind of lazily goes and it walks so everything you have in your cache, and it does it pretty well. Even if you have 300 million records in your cache, it visits them all. It will take it longer to visit you. So what that means is that if you expired, it may take you may live for another 20 seconds. You may get an extra 20 seconds of your life, but that's okay. You're still going to expire. Uh, here. What happened here? Let's put it in the logarithmic scale so I can see better. Uh, all of these guys suddenly expired. Why? Because all of them have been absolutely expired at 642 at the moment of their inception. And here. And, and my capacity is going to now... Um, it's going to get shrunk significantly here to zero and um, as far as the uh, compaction operation on the pile the pile has reserved the pile has reserved two segments 256 gigabytes each you see that two segments and you can change the size of the segment of the pile as well everything here can be configured so it's a pretty insane thing that you can do crazy things with it absolutely crazy things with it and um, uh, right now I'm developing more of the uh, you know unit tests to cover not not kind of graphical tests like this because those tests are like general integration tests you have to do it by hand but uh, I want to have a few uh, you know a hundred these tests that would test different patterns here. So my heap has comp or pile has compacted. The number of segments has decayed to zero, and uh, that's it. We don't have any data in my cache right now. So if we do uh, automatic get, we get get miss ten thousand. We get ten thousand three hundred thirty three. So that's it. And my garbage collector is, is still very fast. Around, I mean, in the worst case, it's less than 300 milliseconds. Right now it's 34 milliseconds. And even if I allocate 300,000, 300 million objects, I have, on this computer, the maximum I've allocated, I think, is around 350 million objects resident in memory. Uh, the garbage collector still performs with the same, with the same, um, you know, within, within the same bucket, it still yields you around 36, 45 milliseconds. And that is if you do a full-blown GC. That is like generation to everything, the full scan. And why it works that efficiently, once again, because we allocate just a few, a few meaning like 
you know, 25, 32, whatever, big, very large buffers, and then we manage those buffers on our own. That's why you can store hundreds of millions of objects on a uh, commodity box with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and on the server, I haven't tried it yet, but I will. On the one terabyte, uh, you can now get servers with one terabyte of RAM. You can probably easily get to the billions of objects range uh, and store billions of objects resident in your single process. Store them in your process, in your web server. So when a request comes, you can, instead of uh, touching your SQL server, you can get all of that information or whatever other server you use, MySQL, whatever, uh, Redis or whatever. Instead of touching those guys, you can get those bytes right from your heap, from the managed heap, okay? And that this is still much faster than inducing a network call for the IP stack and all of that stuff. So that concludes this uh, little video about Pile and uh, um, uh, pile cash. Thanks for watching.